to refurbish an old table tray. So I already really like this distress style, but I still want it to match with my decor. So I'm going to spray paint this gold. Um, for this, it is a little rough, so I'm going to have to refinish it. So depending on your tray, this one specifically is screwed in. I'm going to take that off. I'm going to sand this down and then I'm going to restain it and then put a non-toxic polyurethane on it. So let's get started. just sanded it down. Um, I put a coat of polyurethane on it and then I spray painted the metal piece. Um, so my next steps um, are to polyurethane maybe one or two more times. I ended up having some leftover polyurethane that isn't non-toxic um, but it is oil-based and scratch resistant which is like really important. You can get non-toxic polyurethane and potentially food safe spray paint. I'm using this clear satin polyurethane. Um, it is superior, scratch resistant, maximum durability, fast dry time. So in about four hours, I should be able to do another coat, which will be, should be enough. So yeah, I'm pretty excited. Um, it's gonna be relatively natural. I think I need to sand it down a little bit more to get it to a better shade that I like. Um, I'm a little disappointed in how it's turning out with like the color. Yeah, not my favorite, a little too yellowy. Initially I showed you guys that I was going to do a shiny gold that I had some leftovers. I actually found this metallic finish gold that seems like it's a little bit more antique -y, a little bit more spotted. So instead of like spraying it up close, um, you'll sort of see in the video, I try to spray a little bit farther away to get sort of that rustic feel. And that way I didn't cover up all of the metal. And don't forget to flip over your tray and spray at all angles. Cause if I get real close, you can sort of see, I don't mind some of the black popping out, but at some angles you can really tell that it's not covered as well as it should be. And with the wood bottom, I'm still not sure what I'm going to do. I might paint it to go with the seafoam accent color scheme, but I'm not 100% certain on that. I do like to try to retain natural wood finishes, but it's not really sanding out. And I don't feel like going to get our electric sander from the basement because, you know, and most people don't have electric sanders, so I wanted to show the vigorous process of sanding it by hand. The sandpaper I'm using is 150. You can go a little bit lower to get a smoother finish. 150 is what I had and that's what I'm going to work with. And you really want to sand with the grain. You want to go parallel with the lines. You don't want to go perpendicular to the lines. For the polyurethane coat, you really want to do just a very smooth coat on top. Um, we want to make sure that there's no drippage, so in case it dries, you don't really want to do that. It looks a little bit sloppy, so make sure when you're doing it, very thin coat. I, I almost put a little bit too much on, but then I took the extra and went around the edges with it. Normally, when you're polyurethaning something, you want to put something underneath it, a tarp, plastic, newspaper, drop cloth, whatever it may be. However, we just power washed our back deck and we haven't finished restaining it or anything like that. So I didn't feel the need to. Um, I probably should have. I'm sure Jeff is going to have something to say about it. So this turned out better than I expected. It sort of has this like gold tint to it. So I matched it up with this and I think it looks pretty legit. I'm actually surprised and happy with it. I do need to spray 
I think the metal part with gold again. But yeah, it looks pretty good. For my second coat, what I'm gonna do is lightly sand in between to get a smoother finish. One more coat of polyurethane and it should be all set. To seal it, I'm going to be using this uh, urethane. It's a clear coat and it seals it from mold, mildew, and water, which is pretty clutch for a table tray, especially if you get some water spillage with beverages. So when you are checking to see if it's dry, you wanna touch it and make sure it's not tacky. And tacky just means sticky to the touch. You want to make sure that it's completely dry out before you spray on a clear coat. And before you seal it with the clear coat finish, you want to make sure that it's clear of all residue. So you want to spray the board from about a foot away and you want to try to spray with the grain. So we'll let this dry for about an hour. It takes an hour to dry to the touch, but for recoat we want to wait about two hours. I'm impatient, I'll probably still do it in an hour. So this is the back, I forgot to do it. I did sand it down, but I forgot to polyurethane it, which isn't a big deal, but I'm just gonna go over it with a clear coat because it doesn't really need to be finished. So I'm just gonna wipe it down and spray it. You can see I added a second coat to the back of this because I ended up having to sand it down again because it was pretty rough. So you can sort of see there, but after this, I should be able to wrap up my project and show you the final result. to refurbish and DIY an antique tray table. I hope this gave you some amazing insight on how you can refab everyday items in your house. Um, yeah, remember to like and subscribe the Market Made channel and of course have a great day. Bye.